We're excited. I look forward every year to our Veterans Assembly. And I've written down a little quote, but the willingness of these veterans to sacrifice for our country has earned them our lasting gratitude. So we're grateful that you are here with us today. Thank you for sharing patriotism and your stories. So let's welcome our veterans and I'll turn the time over to Mrs. Nepper. Thank you. We're just really happy to be here. And the first thing we're gonna do is post our colors and then we will do the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, if you follow with us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, boys and girls, we're going to do our two songs for the military. Uh, first song will be our This Is America. Second song will be Thank You, Military. Remember your best singing voices.
So, dang, that was a hard, that's a hard act to follow. You guys brought emotion to my heart. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm Becky Nepper, and I spent 27 years in the Army. I joined because I have a long history of military men in my family. My grandfather was in World War I. Most of my uncles in World War II. My dad was in the Korean War. And my husband and most of my brothers-in-law were in the Vietnam War. And I joined at the end of the Vietnam War. And I have a nephew that's in the military right now and a granddaughter who is going to join the military when she graduates this spring. So that legacy is continuing on, thank goodness. Um, I wanted to know if there are any other military, any veterans in the, in the audience. If there are and you want to come join us and tell us about your experiences, that would be great. If not, we just want to say thank you. Um, so we're celebrating today Veterans Day because in 1918, when my grandfather was in World War I, on the 11th hour, 11th day of the 11th month, the countries that were involved in the First World War signed a document ending that war. And that was supposed to be the war to end all wars, but it didn't turn out that way. We unfortunately still have times when we have to go to war, but we are so thankful that we have men and women who are willing to volunteer at this time because we don't have a draft anymore like when most of us joined. You, some, the men sometimes got drafted without a choice to join the military. So I was a woman at that, well, I'm still a woman, but at that time women, um, well, they're still not drafted. There's talk of women being drafted, but they're still not drafted. Um, so I joined voluntarily uh, to serve my country, and I was, got to do a lot of fun stuff. I got to refuel helicopters, I got to drive a big army truck a lot, got to meet a lot of wonderful other soldiers, and I got to see a lot of the United States. And I got to serve my country, which I am so proud of. And now I'm gonna pass it on um, to our other veterans, and hopefully they'll get that video going later, and if not, then we'll just finish our program, and thank you very much for honoring us. Uh -huh. You guys are awesome. I love that, what you did for us. Thank you. Uh, my name's Blaine Huff. I'm from Spanish Fork. I joined the Spanish Fork National Guard in 1971. Uh, we had basic training in Fort Polk, Louisiana, and our AIT was in uh, Fort Sill, Oklahoma, where we learned survey. When we got back, they changed our unit to the 155 howitzers, and we learned how to shoot those great big guns. My job was to pull the lanyard, so I can't hear very good anymore, so if you want to speak up when you talk to me. Uh, we sure are appreciative of our young people here, and our country is going in the right direction. Thank you. My name is Ray Olson. I joined the National Guard when I was a junior in high school. I stayed in there for 23 years. My job was an equipment operator, cats, graders, doing roads and airports. So I retired after the National Guard. Thank you. Good afternoon, boys and girls and faculty. Uh, we're honored to be here today. Uh, my name is Gary Talkas. I live in Salem, Utah. I, was in the, I joined the military, the United States Marine Corps in 1958, was sent to the Marianas Islands and the islands of Guam. Got my scuba training there. Uh, I served in, uh, in the Chichi Islands, uh, Iwo Jima, Hajima, and Chichijima, which was uh, very pivotal during the, during the war. We, took, we 
he took those islands from the Japanese in uh, 1944. Uh, I'm grateful to be here today. I'm, I'm also um, grateful to be an American. Thank you. I'm Sid Carden. I joined the Army National Guard in 1969, which was probably before most of you in here were even born, and served and for 38 years, retired in 2007. Spent 366 days in 2004, because it was a leap year, uh, in Iraq. Um, 26 years of the 38 that I served were with the engineers, and in Iraq, we helped rebuild the infrastructure that was destroyed during Desert Storm, which was 12, 10 years prior to that, and during the ground combat phase, when the ground combat phase went through Iraq and cleared out the organized resistance. So there were people that were living in Iraq that didn't have water, or sewer, or bridges, or electricity, things that we take for granted that we have every day. You turn the tap on and water comes out, right? You, you flip the switch and the lights go on. When you use the restroom, you flush the toilet and it goes someplace. You may not know where it goes, but it goes someplace. Um, so we helped rebuild all that in the time that we were in Iraq. Uh, the other years I spent, similar to a lot of these gentlemen who can't hear very well, I spent nine years in the artillery and in three years as a post sergeant major at Camp Williams. Um, it was a great opportunity to serve. I'm grateful to be an American. My, my father passed away last year. He was a World War II veteran, and he passed away two weeks before his 97th birthday. Uh, I have a son who is currently serving in the Air Force, one who has served in the uh, Army National Guard, during Operation Noble Eagle. Um, I had an uncle that served in the Army. So we have a tradition of, and a legacy of service in our military. I am so grateful for all of you and your willingness to respect and reverence the flag and what it means to us as veterans especially it's very rewarding to see you folks respect that flag. You may not totally understand the price that has been paid so that that flag can wave proudly over the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you again for all you do. My name is Steve Stone. I uh, spent 35 years in the Army, in the Army National Guard. I uh, started my career during Vietnam, but instead of going to Vietnam, I went to the Arctic Test Center, Alaska. So there was quite a bit of difference between the two. Uh, and I ended my career with a combat tour to Afghanistan. Uh, I want you guys to know that I am proud to have served this country, served under the flag of the United States of America. I want you to know that I'm proud to live in this community, in this area. I want you to know that if you don't want to join the military, if you don't want to serve in the military, that's good. But serve your community and serve your country some way. It doesn't. That doesn't necessarily need, mean in the military. You can be city councilman, a mayor, a president, 
Someone in this room may be the president of these great United States someday. So serve one way or another. Be proud to be who you are and where are you living and what you're doing. I want to thank you for having us here today. We much appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Doug Houghton. Uh, first of all, I wish to thank these veterans that I have the opportunity of serving with. We get together sometimes pro close to 100 times a year as we do ser uh, military rites and services at the cemeteries, and it's a pleasure to rub shoulders with them. I want you to know that uh, I had the opportunity of teaching school for 36 years, and I had the opportunity of teaching your dear principal. I don't know if I taught her very much, but uh, she taught me a lot. And uh, what a great lady she is, and we can tell by her leadership and you wonderful teachers what kind of students you are just by the way you act. You have great teachers and, uh, and great principal and I'm glad to have been able to rub shoulders with some of, uh, with Angie, excuse me, Angie, for uh, calling you by your first name. Now, now, you kids don't do that, okay? But anyway, she was a great student. In fact, if I remember right, she drew straight A's, and I'm not fooling you. She did, and I, I'm not too good at memory, but I can remember that. Anyway, I joined the Army National Guard in 1963, and I served for 10 years in two different units with the 145th Field Artillery and the 116th uh, Combat Engineers. Uh, fortunately, I didn't go to war, but uh, I want you to know that I have the deepest respect for every single man and woman that gave their lives for us that we could sit here like we do today, go home tonight, have dinner with our family, take a hot bath, and not worry about anything. There's so many like Steve and Sid and these different guys that s served in these third world countries that the, the kids didn't know where the restrooms were because there weren't any. And I think it was said, or someone t said today, some of these kids, oh, it, I, it was at one of the other schools, one of our veterans mentioned that in Vietnam, many of the children that were so hungry that they would come to eat out of the garbage cans after the military and different people had eaten. Spoiled food, all kinds of things, disease. So as Steve has just said, you look at this wonderful flag over here, it, under which we all served. We hope you grow up to be good, responsible citizens. And like Steve says, serve in one capacity or another, because we are so blessed. All you have to do is travel outside this great country to realize how lucky we are. Thank you for being so attentive. We appreciate you. And it's good to see the youth growing up like they are, so strong and learning and doing the things that your teachers and your parents want you to. And I'll turn the time over to Reed. Well, I would just like to say what a dynamite the school that this is, uh, that was amazing as I look out and see those hands going uh, every which way, it just, uh, it touches the heart. And uh, that was a wonderful tribute that you have created to uh, all, all veterans and uh, all Americans who have served in the military. Uh, my name's Dale Bigler. Uh, I grew up in northern Wyoming, up by the Montana border, and uh, lived on a little farm, had never really been around the military at all, but I did get drafted in 1965, and uh, uh, while I was going to college, 
And uh, later I uh, went to Officer Candidate School. And actually I had a chance to travel around during the many years that I served in the, uh, uh, in the military, uh, both active duty and on reserves. Uh, in our family, actually I have two sons and a daughter that uh, served in the military, two in the Air Force, and she was an Army, uh, Army nurse. I have three brothers that, uh, that served in the military in different branches, but I had never been around the military till I uh, started basic training. But I, uh, I did basic training in Fort Ord, California, and then uh, went to Fort Benning, Georgia, where I did officer Canada school. Then I had a commission in armor and went to Fort Knox, Kentucky to do that training. Then I was assigned to Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Uh, we were there for a year. I was actually married and had a couple of children at the time. But uh, then I came down on orders to go to Vietnam. And uh, while in Vietnam, I, was, I thought that I would probably be assigned to the DMZ where all of the armor officers were going as mechanized infantry platoon leaders. But I was, a, I was assigned to, they call it MACV, it's the Military Advisory Command, and we just worked with the South of Vietnamese units and taught them tactics and how to call in airstrikes and how, how to set up, uh, uh, how to do military exercises. But in Vietnam, the average, the average farmer in uh, Vietnam earned about $85 a year. Uh, there were, they lived uh, where I was at in South Vietnam. There were a number of their houses that just had the reject uh, 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 Coca-Cola and other soda pop uh, uh, manufacturers. That was the siding and the roof on their house, houses in a lot of them. But during the uh, time, I, I served seven more years uh, in the Army Reserve after I came back. <clears throat> and then I served uh, 16 years in the Air Force Reserves. But we traveled to a lot of different countries. Uh, we did humanitarian service uh, projects down in Honduras and Guatemala. And you know, what as mentioned here about the circumstances that we take for, for granted that we have we have electricity, we have indoor plumbing, we have safe water, uh, we have uh, very comfortable homes. Uh, that is nothing that they had uh, in most all of the countries that I served in. Uh, we went to Germany and Korea and uh, Okinawa and, uh, and to uh, several, several trips to uh, Korea. But, we are thankful to be Americans. I am just thankful for the opportunity that I had to uh, serve and to be a part of the military. It's been a real blessing in, in my life. And I just thank you. What a wonderful school. What wonderful teachers to teach them these patriotic songs and teach them to be proud to be Americans. Uh, in some places in America today, there's movements trying to remove that, to make you not be proud to be an American. But all of you ought to be willing to stand up, and it's fine to say, I'm proud to be an American. But I'm thankful to be uh, a part of this American Legion group, thankful for the different uh, service tributes we pay to old veterans uh, as they pass on at the cemeteries. But thank you for your time, and you are wonderful. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. You've been so good. Our last part of the program is um, we're going to play taps for you, or one of our gentlemen is. Uh, it's this very special tune that we play at our military funerals, but I'm going to let Sid explain it a little better. TAPS is a final farewell and tribute 
to a service member who has passed on. We play this at every military rites funeral that we do. It is, we ask that while taps are, is being played that you stand and place your hands over your heart. If you are a military veteran, it is proper to render a hand salute when taps is being played. So we'll go ahead and do taps now. Go ahead and stand and place your hand over your heart in respect for those veterans who have given the ultimate sacrifice that we can do this today. Thank you. Teachers, you may dismiss back to class.